guys hear me okay? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Okay, well, that's, that's, that's loud okay. enough, I think. Okay. Uh, great. Well, hello. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dave Nielsen. And um, should I go ahead and just go ahead and start, or do you want to say something first? Okay, great. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Dave Nielsen, and I'd like to welcome you to Cloud Camp Hong Kong, the first one ever. Um, before we even go any further, I quickly want to thank our hosts. Uh, they've been very gracious to um, put us up in this beautiful building uh, with such um, great facilities here. So uh, please help me thank uh, the Cyberport folks for providing us this space. It's a round of applause. Thank you very much. And um, specifically, I, we had a, a brief lunch. So thank you again for having us. And we had a uh, tour. They actually have a data center here. Uh, running OpenStack in their uh, beautiful data center. Um, so we just got to see that. So the great way to kick off this event to actually see OpenStack running. Um, I should say we heard it running because it was very loud. <laughs> so uh, anyway, so it's very, very touching and um, uh, a great way to kick off this event to, to feel that energy coming out of those servers. So thank you very much again. Um, all right. so. What are we doing here? Uh, how many of you have ever heard of Cloud Camp before? Raise your hand. Okay. This is new to our first time. All right, okay, a few of you. Uh, oh, so you raised your hand, but then you took it back. <laughs> um, so we've actually put on quite a few of these events, but not in Hong Kong. And uh, I don't know why, I guess it's just the luck of the draw that we didn't get here before. Um, but it, we were very happy to have a, a local contact, both here, Bruce, um, is our local contact here in Hong Kong. And also, uh, Ben uh, Du right over there came down from all the way from Shanghai. We're going to be here. And I wanted to point out Ben because Ben is on the, uh, he was elected as an uh, independent board member of the OpenStack Foundation. So the tens of thousands of members uh, voted for representatives to represent you and me and anybody else who wants to be a part of the OpenStack Foundation. And uh, he was actually, actually elected as a, a representative. So he um, has to have representation from, official representation from the OpenStack Foundation here today. Um, and uh, also, I want to uh, uh, acknowledge in our supporters, our sponsors. So I am here representing uh, HP. We have some other HP folks here in the back. I'd like to uh, recognize um, Sunil in the light blue jacket there, and Vikram right next to him, and Sylvia uh, Tondo in the far left over there. And again, my name is Dave, and we are part of the uh, HP uh, Cloud Developer Evangelism Program. So if you have any questions about HP and what we're doing with uh, OpenStack and the cloud for enterprises, please let us know. Um, and of course, uh, I'd also like to thank uh, just the, the folks at OpenStack Foundation who put me in contact with uh, Bruce, and of course, I'd already met uh, Ben before, um, and also eventually Eric over to hear from Rexton. So thank you very much, Eric, for helping us spread the word and get the word out. Um, and gosh, I hope I'm not forgetting somebody else. Um, uh, you'll hear in a moment from uh, Dr. David Chung in the back there. Um, so thank you as well. Uh, lots of people to thank. <laughs> I guess that's how it works in the first time you come to a city. And you know, it really is impossible to come from another country um, and uh, have an event in, a, in, in Hong Kong or anywhere else without having uh, connections and friends in local places. So um, whether it's uh, Bruce or Allison, which I didn't see her other she was back there. Yes, yeah, so I want to thank Allison as well. Thank you very much. Uh, and I guess we should thank Raymond, even though he's not here, for also helping. So that, that would be the cyber report crew, uh, Allison, Bruce, uh, Dr. Chung, and uh, Raymond. So uh, again, uh, let's let's thank all of them for uh, helping put this event on and getting us here uh, one more time. So thank you very much to all of you for helping put this event together. And now I'm going to turn it over to uh, thanking all of you, because the one thing, for those of you who didn't raise your hand, that means you don't know how Cloud Camp works, we're actually going to invite you to participate in this event. Now, um, 
what that means is we would hope that you'll ask questions. Uh, we are going to give some presentations to help get things started, so uh, you don't have to come out with questions right away. But eventually, we would like it if you could ask some questions. And it could be anything, really. It could be uh, some, a simple question. We had somebody ask, you know, what kind of business opportunities are there around uh, OpenStack? Um, so it could be non-technical questions. It could also be technical questions. So if there's something that you're particularly interested in, directly related to OpenStack or cloud computing in general, uh, I hope you will feel comfortable uh, to raise your hand and, or, or ask a question um, you know, in whatever way that makes that's comfortable for you. Okay? If that means not asking the question, then that's okay too. Okay? Um, all right. So how is today's event going to go? Um, well, we have an agenda on the website, but as an, as an unconference, we can adjust that agenda as we go. So we are not limited to the uh, agenda. And um, so when I give my presentation, you will see that what I will do is I will be flexible in my presentation. In other words, I will ask you some questions, and based on the questions, I, I may adjust my presentation. Um, and that also means later on we are going to have a panel. Uh, Larry Carvalho is uh, sitting back over here. Larry, where you in? Uh, he's a, an analyst in the cloud computing space and has been a supporter of cloud camps uh, all over the world. Uh, he is going to be leading some Q&A where we have one or two panelists and we'll also have uh, perhaps uh, some questions from you. So be thinking of a question. Um, the topic will be the enterprise. How do you take an application that you've created uh, and you want to introduce it to the enterprise. What's different about that than perhaps just simply putting the web, putting the application up on the web somewhere and letting consumers have access to it? Because that's a very different uh, environment than if you take an application and you want to offer it to an enterprise. So uh, be thinking about that, uh, if, especially if that's an area of interest to you be thinking about, okay, yes, my, I do intend to sell my product to enterprise uh, customers. Be thinking about, like, what, what are some of the challenges you might face that is different than simply putting a website up on the public internet? Okay? Because it can be much different and more challenging. Of course, it can also be much more rewarding, too, because uh, enterprise might have some money. Okay, so, um, Okay, so what we're going to do uh, to begin, I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Chung up to share a few words. <coughs> Dr. David Chung is the CTO of Cyberport here, and uh, I would like to let him just give it, have a moment to share a few words and let us know uh, what's going on here at Cyberport. Okay, would you like this? Sure. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, since it's a community event, so I, I just rolled my sleeve and uh, put my so-called technical hats on. And uh, I think uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, think about uh, when they talk of the day, you know, why not Hong Kong? Why cloud types, you know, come to Hong Kong so late? Okay. So uh, I think the question is how we promote ourselves. We are a lot of us in this local. So I think on this cloud space, uh, we need more attention. So I would just ask you, all of you, when you, you know, prepare your questions, especially your local, and try to communicate uh, with the rest of the community uh, around the world, uh, especially with China, you know, we have a uh, representative uh, uh, with the foundation people as well, uh, as well as the rest of the community, because I think it's important, because we are part of this global, global family, okay? Just uh, talk about this uh, event, I think uh, when we receive a mail from Dave and you know, Bruce kind of sending me, I was on roll, and uh, I think it's still, uh, you know, maybe Chinese New Year kind of time frame, I said, shall we sponsor this event? No brainer, okay? This is a community-based event, and then I said, well, go ahead, and, and let's put it together. We don't have a uh, so-called proper conference room, but this is good enough, right, for, for a community gathering, and I, I just think it's a great turn up today, and uh, I hope that this, this kind of momentum, and we can bring Dave back, right? So it's just uh, give us uh, some, some more, uh, I would say, the energy uh, from, the, from the community. I think it's very important. Okay, so talk about Cyberport. Uh, I think if you are 
here. Uh, you kind of knowing us uh, for some time, but how about the technical side of it? Uh, so I, I kind of uh, give you some perspective. Uh, I will be very quick because I don't want to steal the the floor uh, for you guys to kind of contribute. But I just want you to, uh, to have uh, some uh, progress uh, on OpenStack because a lot of people kind of thinking about OpenStack. Uh, and open source, as a matter of fact, uh, are they real? Are they re really prepared for, you know, the enterprise? And uh, I can really uh, kind of sharing with you uh, that it, it's real, it's working here. So, okay. So I can give you a quick slide because I prepare more slides because Bruce helped me to prepare a number of slides just in case you have questions. So I will quickly glance through it. Okay, so this cloud has been launched, uh, you know, for a couple of months. Uh, 4th of November, we picked this day because OpenStack Summit actually hosts their first ever OpenStack Summit outside of the United States, and that's in Hong Kong, and we are very proud of that as well. 3,000 people gather in AWE, and we have a great uh, event there. It's a three-day conference, and uh, we, look, we are uh, kind of uh, you leverage on this opportunity to launch this, this event. Okay, so some of the design goal of our cloud, um, we make sure that we, we don't have a so-called vendor lock-in, and that's our, our goal. We don't want to kind of compete against uh, a lot of so-called public service cloud uh, provider. We want to work with them. How does that work? We want to be a cloud broker. Okay, we want to be a middleman. Okay, Cyberport is a port in itself to the internet. Okay, and then we want to bring all our cloud community to the public cloud as easy as possible. Okay, that's our design goal. So, so a lot of our kind of design uh, initiative is based on this. Okay, we don't expect our sub uh, company to host their platform forever on our platform. We want to help them to develop, to leverage on the latest uh, great technology out there, and we will have, we have the um, you know all kind of man management tools to enable that to happen. Okay, so a lot of people also ask, are, are we based on the latest uh, OpenStack? We are not yet. We're still based on Grizzly uh, version of it, and uh, which is about um, a year ago. Okay, but it's still uh, working okay. Uh, so of course uh, there are a lot of uh, challenges, uh, but we will just uh, work around this. And uh, our technical team, we have about uh, three people to support the whole cloud platform, and we are so proud of it because. If we are talking about other software, I've been in the service industry for over 20 plus years. No such uh, technology can allow us to have, I would say, uh, such a, I would say, a minimum uh, a headcount to support this. And you talk about our kind of guarantee. You know, uh, we we kind of go through this uh, earlier. Uh, the availability. We talk about 99.95. And we also ISO certified already. So this this kind of, uh, uh, I would say, kind of a guarantee quality of service is kind of important to a lot of uh, uh, user. And uh, so we, we want to make sure that uh, this, from day one, we want to keep us such a high standard, okay? And uh, people may be interested, how many users are there? Uh, we have about 300, 323, but the, it's moving number. So we're talking about all the startup company, and then uh, 40 of them are very active user. Okay, so once we identify them, we'll work with them and try to move them to the public cloud service. Okay, that's our goal. Okay, so a lot of people are still kind of moving on this uh, client server kind of model and then move on the cloud. Still, a lot of people are not very, uh, not very clear, you know, they kind of lean into us, you know. Put a website instead of cloud, you know, cloud application that kind of thing. So, so we are also providing a lot of so-called consulting service to a lot of our, of our startup uh, company to kind of act, act up their their so-called systems. That's very important because from day one, a lot of people are still very much think about client server, relation database. Okay, that's I would say old technology. So sorry to say that. Yeah, we have to face the reality. Mobile is here, cloud is here. So all the architecture backend has to be changed, okay? So we have to uh, give a lot of new, um, I would say new way of look at uh, system architecture, okay? So this is a challenge, I think locally uh, we have to face it because all the school today is still teaching relational database, unfortunately, okay? So that's a reality check, 
but how can we help the startup company to move on this cloud? Uh, I think that's a lot of effort we, need, we still need to do. Okay. So this give you a fun front end look at our cloud, and uh, you know it's not perfect. You know it's our version 1.0. Uh, we still you know kind of debating you know whether we should change uh, the login that kind of thing. But anyway, we have a good start, uh, uh, and and then this 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 will not currently. And uh, you may also ask, what kind of typical application can take advantage of the cloud? Okay, so one of those is uh, rendering uh, service, software rendering. And it's proved to be very uh, practical and uh, leverage on cloud, all based on software. To uh, leverage on this so-called power computing, uh, we can grow uh, as we require. So this is one of the classic uh, you know, examples that we, we can run on it. There are other so-called IoT applications. Uh, Intel Bank application that uh, monitor a lot of, uh, you know, put up sensors all around Hong Kong. Talk about this uh, typical one is a noise, uh, you know, monitoring. So once you've got to, to, to a certain threshold, you will alert and then uh, you perhaps will, this, this company was actually monitoring a lot of environmental data all around Hong Kong and uh, in the region as well. So they will find, you know, certain Operator, if they create a concert or some noise pollution all around a a uh, shopping mall, perhaps you know. So, so this have practical use, you know. Another one classic will be intelligent building. Uh, this also is very scalable, and you can uh, monitor a lot of devices uh, on our building management. So, this is another one of our startup company has been leveraged on our platform to to develop their application. GIS, you know, and again, this is also very, uh, a lot, if you have a lot of consumer devices all around Hong Kong, then you can take advantage of that. Very scalable. Again, you, you know, you, you cannot forecast how much traffic you're going to get and how much user you, you're going to get at any one time. So this is another typical uh, application that take advantage of the cloud. Polling, you know, we, we are very famous. You know, in Hong Kong, you, are not, you know, Miss Hong Kong, you know, this is a very classic one, you know. So polling is another uh, important uh, one uh, to use leverage on cloud. You know, if you architecture, uh, architect it, uh, with the right architecture. Okay, so as you understand, we are promoting the OpenStack uh, community in Hong Kong. Uh, so far, we have 100, uh, 150 users around as of today, and uh, we are doing it uh, for the community. And we all, we are you know that's the partnership I think you know if we don't have this community I think it's very difficult to work with you know cloud clan for example so so I think if we have this this uh, community together we you know we can uh, exchange a lot of technical issue uh, you know on, online or offline you know we we are very encouraged uh, using the forum uh, to do a lot of uh, sharing as well and we also uh, organize some technical training uh, as. Be appropriate uh, that during a new releases of uh, OpenStack, uh, we'll, we'll do it together with different vendors. And uh, this is some of some of the example we did before. And uh, yeah, so okay. So in terms of reference, we also try to write a you know case study sharing on the net. So we share with the OpenStack Foundation as well as uh, Connecticut, Ubuntu. You know, uh, so we have published our. Article on, on different uh, you know um, website to promote our stuff uh, to ensure that people understand Hong Kong has a footprint on OpenStack. Okay, so we also work very closely with the foundation people. Yeah, so our trip to Austin uh, in early March we're, we're going to connect up with them as well. So we bring in a whole bunch of startup company to visit them in uh, Austin, Texas. Okay, so. Okay, so that's my talk. Uh, I will pass on to Dave, and uh, so uh, I will encourage every one of you to ask more questions uh, today or later on. Yeah, so stay tuned. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, great. Thank you. And actually, that a uh, really uh, while I was sitting there listening to him talk about your community, uh, I also was thinking about um, you know maybe you would like to know a little bit about what what our community is like, where I'm from. Uh, you know, I'm from uh, Mountain View, which is in uh, Silicon Valley. Um, and I, I, I'm very fortunate, because a lot of people have to drive 
through a lot of traffic to get to uh, work every day. And um, you know, I'm consulting over at HP, and it's uh, I don't even have to get on the freeway. It's a nice, easy drive. And, um, and uh, as I drive to work, I, I go by lots of different um, uh, businesses and startups. And I even hear there's a startup that's from Hong Kong Cyberport that is now in Mountain View. Uh, they've got a, uh, what is it, a large, like, what was it, it's uh, an apartment that they're, yeah, yeah. Um, that they're working out of. It's probably, it's probably walking distance from my house. So it's, uh, and, and then uh, of course, um, I forget your name, but, uh, was that Patrick? Patrick is also once working in Mountain View, uh, um, right across the, the railroad tracks from where uh, I used to live in the townhomes uh, on the other side of Mountain View. Uh, so it's, it's really not that, if you think about it, all the connections that we have, um, you know, I think in today's world, six degrees of separation is just far too big. I think it's maybe three or two, or sometimes maybe we've even met before. <laughs> so um, uh, another interesting thing that I was just reading about um, as I was I was checking in on Foursquare, I, I noticed a friend of mine uh, was at a, a conference in San Francisco. Um, called Wisdom 2.0. Now, honestly, when I see that title, that name of a conference, Wisdom 2.0, I'm thinking a little, you know, fluffy nonsense, you know, so um, there's there's a lot of different conferences in Silicon Valley, and some of them are practical and interesting, and others are maybe too interesting, okay? Um, but I asked him, well, what is this conference about? It seems like a strange topic, Wisdom 2.0. Uh, it, it can mean anything. And he said it, it's where, um, <clears throat> it's where um, the technology meets uh, like intelligent philosophies. And specifically, he, he called out uh, um, uh, Hinduism and Buddhism. And I thought, that's interesting. You know, here I am over here in Hong Kong. Uh, you know, where, where those philosophies, those religions are more prominent. And, um, and, and in, in Silicon Valley, they're having a, a technology conference related to those topics. So uh, it just goes to show that the world is definitely a lot uh, more connected and, and relevant than I think it, it has been uh, as far as my travels have, have shown. It's becoming more and more connected. So. I, I hope that uh, you will feel free to share with us anything that you have to uh, let me know about what's going on in your community. Um, now, Ben, I know that you're, uh, Ben, again, thank you again for coming down to meet with us. Uh, ben is uh, uh, very active in the OpenStack community up in uh, Shanghai, and I think uh, it'd be nice if you could share a few words uh, about what you're up to and what's going on with the OpenStack Foundation. Okay. Thanks. Okay. I'm, I'm Ben, I'm from Shanghai, uh, and I uh, work for the OpenStack in China. Uh, and first, I uh, should so thank for the organizer, the invitation at the time. Yeah. So that's my second time to Hong Kong. Last time is uh, uh, last year, I was uh, Yeah, I think uh, three years ago, when I promoted OpenStack in China, um, there, there are a lot of questions and thoughts about why we choose, choose, choose uh, OpenStack. But for now, uh, I see you are here, and a lot of people you know on the stack already. Yeah. And two years ago, uh, when we connect with the companies uh, to, to help them to use the stack, they really asked, uh, uh, why would you open stack, not cost stack, or AWS, or something else? But uh, in some last year, we see a lot of Chinese engineers and companies come to Hong Kong. And uh, they all choose of like and uh, also uh, we see last uh, talk they use all the stack for their customers already. Yeah. So today I'm come here. I want to communicate with, communicate with the guys to uh, know what I can do for you uh, to help the local community for the open stack and uh, also we organize a lot of events in China and we are very. I uh, want to invite uh, you come to Shanghai, to Beijing, and other cities in, in China. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Thank you, Don.
Okay. Um, so uh, I have a few questions for you. Uh, again, I'm preparing you to ask questions. So I must lead by example. So the first questions I have for you are, how many of you um, have a technology background? You are some sort of IT pro or sysadmin or developer or something uh, technical in your past or current job career. Raise your hands. Ah, you have hands. Okay, this is good. This is a good sign. All right. So I know you have hands now. There's no excuse. Okay. So how many of you have uh, experience in the technology field? Um, oh, I forgot. Okay, for those of you who did not raise your hand, please raise your hand. Okay, these are the people who are not considering themselves technology professionals uh, in coding perspective or something like that. Uh, just out of curiosity, would you say, uh, for those of you who did not raise your hand, are you involved in um, some sort of uh, business uh, marketing or um, product management or something like that? Uh, raise your hand if it's more of a, still a business, but uh, okay, that was most of you. Uh, did I leave anything else? Is somebody here maybe from academia or the government or uh, maybe a VC in the audience? No, okay, all right, well, uh, we'd like to hear from you too. Okay, so for those of you who, uh, actually this goes for all of you, how many of you have experience, not just with some technology, but also with cloud technology? So uh, you've done something with the cloud in your profession. All right, a few less hands, but still quite a few hands. And then how many of you have actually experience uh, with OpenStack itself? Raise your hand, okay. Okay, good. Now, um, a couple of you, I think, are here at Cyberport, right? So how many of you are actually here as a part of a, a, a startup or a company here at Cyberport? The two of you there, okay. Anybody else? And right here, okay. And uh, one of you, I think, was with, um, uh, has a project that you're going to demo today? Any of you? Maybe? Maybe not? Oh, I know, there was a, okay, right here? Oh, oh, you're also going to demo, okay. And what was the project called? Titan, right? right okay, good. Okay, so we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, and we also have a, a, perhaps a demo from the Rackspace folks. And uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. And then we also want to hear some ideas from you. Okay, so, um, there was a, a, a Paola back there. Uh, she's not with a technology background, but she has a business background, and she's looking for opportunities around um, OpenStack and, and the cloud. I'm just wondering if there are others, uh, other opportunities. What are you here to find out about? Uh, are you looking for, uh, did you come here to maybe look in, to see what kind of opportunities are there in the cloud? Okay, and so with that in mind, I wanna ask, how many of you came here to learn about just cloud computing in general? You're, you you want to learn about cloud and the opportunities related to cloud computing in general. How many of you would say that that's your your interest? Not too many. Only a few. Okay. Uh, and how many of you are here specifically because you want to learn about OpenStack opportunities or learn about what's going on with OpenStack? Raise your hand. Okay. Now that was not everybody. What else are you here for? <laughs> Cloud, OpenStack, uh, maybe you came for the free uh, HP t-shirts? <laughs> okay, all right. Well, uh, if you decide that there's something else you want to learn about today, please raise your hand. I know that the, you know, it's not as common uh, to stand up and voice your ideas uh, here, but I, I know it's possible because I saw you raise your arms, your hands earlier. So please do that. Even if it's just a smile, it's nice to know that you're uh, connecting with me and, and I, I feel like we're having a good time. Good. All right, so what I'd like to do now is I'd like to uh, share with you, uh, I have a presentation to share with you. Uh, it's about um, some things that I've been noticing about the changes and ways in which we've been developing applications uh, from before cloud until now. Okay, so let me get that slide open here. Okay, 
And um, so what I'm going to do is, <laughs> this is going to be funny. Hold on one second. Okay, so what I want to talk to you about is uh, some work I've been doing around deploying applications using open source cloud frameworks. But that's actually going to be the end of the presentation because what I want to share with you to get to the end of the presentation is the background leading up to today. What has been going on? Um, with cloud computing that is changing the way we're deploying applications, okay? So first of all, um, so yeah, so I'm gonna talk about uh, you know, why do we need cloud computing? What are the application stacks that run in the cloud? Uh, what are some different deployment options? And then what are the open source cloud deployment frameworks? Um, now, like I said, I'm gonna spend most of my time at the beginning of this, uh, but first let's just talk about, uh, let, me, let, let you know who I am, and why I might know something about this. Um, so I've been a developer since the 90s, and uh, I actually was the first person certified by Microsoft to teach active server pages. Remember that technology? Okay. Back then, it was called active server pages. Today, we refer to it as classic active server pages, or classic ASP. Uh, and I got very, I started a small consulting company um, back in the dot-com era, um, you could easily claim that you knew something and get a consulting job. <clears throat> and so um, I did know something, and I could get a consulting job, and I would teach uh, classic ASP, and just about every company I went to would, at the end of the class asked me if they could hire me as a consultant. Uh, it turns out I was a very good presenter. Uh, they didn't know if I was any good at programming. Uh, but I was very good at teaching, and so I built up a small company of about 30 people, and I hired all of them without any programming experience and taught them all the program. And so I built up this team all from scratch, and uh, which worked really, really well until the bubble burst. I had zero salespeople. I was the only salesperson, and uh, it's not a very good business model uh, when there's competition. <laughs> So um, anyway, I, I took some time off, and I was uh, very fortunate to um, get a job at PayPal as their first API evangelist. And it turns out, looking back, um, I, I think, I don't want to claim this, but I may have actually been the first web API evangelist ever. <clears throat> and I, I never really thought about that until uh, Jeff Barr was over at a company called Amazon. Uh, claimed to be the first web API evangelist. And I know him very well, and I know he was hired a month after I was. <laughs> no, it's just a joke. But uh, I was very early to the web APIs in the late 90s. Uh, I was doing a lot of e-commerce integrations, and of course we were using a form of web APIs back then. But I noticed very quickly that that was a very powerful concept of having a shared resource somewhere on the internet that many people could use, and it would get better the more people used it. So I left uh, PayPal eventually to go to a uh, startup called StrikeIron, which was, uh, it was its goal to become an API marketplace. And we were very early to the market. In fact, we were too early, honestly. Uh, the only thing that we really accomplished that I'm proud of is uh, that Amazon tried to sue us because they had filed a patent for an API marketplace. And so they sent their expensive lawyers to shut us down, and we were able to prove that we had launched our API marketplace before they had filed their patent. So we invalidated their patent um, for an API marketplace. Otherwise, they might own the concept of an API marketplace. Um, I was very early to the Amazon Web Services beta and also the SalesforceForce.com beta. In fact, if you do a search for <coughs> ASP and Force.com, uh, you will see my article that I wrote about uh, seven years ago. It's still the number one article on how to integrate class, uh, I'm sorry, active server pages with uh, Force.com. 
Uh, but all of this really prepared me for is uh, to organize, uh, uh, eventually I, web services kind of evolved into cloud computing. It's, it's one of the technologies that enabled cloud computing. Of course, the other major one being virtualization. And you put virtualization with, uh, with APIs and you get um, you know, infrastructure as a service, basically. And uh, so I started Cloud Camp with another guy named uh, Ruben Cohen. And this is very interesting, the way we met, because uh, I was part of a cloud computing online Google group. We were just very early to cloud. There weren't that many of us in there, maybe a couple hundred people. And uh, an email came through saying, hey, uh, I'm coming to San Francisco because there are these two conferences I want to go to. And in between, I thought we'd put on a cloud camp. I thought, wow, oh, I love that name. I, and I loved it so much that I had already uh, purchased the domain name cloudcamp.org and I intended to organize some events. And so I said, oh, I would love to help you. And he replied, and I said, in fact, I have cloudcamp.org and we can use that domain name. And he said, aha, I have cloudcamp.com. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how we met. And uh, we ended up starting CloudCamp and put on all these events. And uh, Ruben has um, continued to be a good friend and still is a cloud evangelist. He works over at Citrix. And he's actually right now, coincidentally, in Bangalore, uh, putting on some event there that he's working on. So um, next time we will collaborate better and we will try to organize our schedules to both be in the same city at the same time. Anyway, um, out of cloud computing came a lot of very interesting concepts. Um, I don't think the concept around DevOps would actually have occurred had cloud computing not come along. Uh, how many of you have heard of DevOps? Okay. Actually, that's less than a third of you, so let me just take one moment. This is a, a topic that I will get into in my presentation. But DevOps is a, um, is, is, it, it happens because for far too long, there has been a separation between the developer teams that build applications and the IT and sysadmin teams that actually set up and monitor the applications. And uh, with cloud computing, you have this uh, opportunity to deploy your code and get feedback right away. But if you have a, a wall between these two teams, the development team and the deployment team, then the process of deploying your application and getting feedback uh, is slow because you have to go through this process of handing your application to another team and then they are going to deploy and monitor that application for you. But because cloud computing gives developers the tools that makes it easier for them to deploy their own applications, uh, it means that in some cases the IT professionals uh, do not, are not required. Okay, now, of course, this is not always the case, but in some cases it is, especially in a small startup or team. So what this did is it did two things. Number one, it put pressure on IT professionals that they needed to provide more value in order to be involved in the project. Uh, but number two, it, uh, it, it enabled the developers to learn how difficult supporting IT actually is. And so together, they can, uh, if they bring down that wall between the two and they work on collaborating, uh, then the developer can focus more on developing the application and the IT professional can <coughs> focus on more on developing, uh, I'm sorry, providing IT services to the developer. And so the developer can receive the cloud services uh, through the cloud, but also the additional support from the IT teams uh, that are still required. And they can do this in a more consistent process so that the feedback uh, can get back to the developer quicker instead of having to wait for a long deployment process. Okay? So DevOps is, a, is basically like CloudCamp, but it's a, there's a group called uh, DevOps Days who are talking about this process and how to make it better. Very important. And I'll get to that in a moment. And um, I've put on lots of other events that are related to CloudCamp that uh, were inspired by CloudCamp, like Big Data Camp. So Big Data is also a topic that is inspired through cloud computing because so much data gets created in the cloud and you need to understand how to deal with that. And uh, I am consulting over at HP. I'm working with uh, Sunil and Vikram in the back there. 
And uh, so again, we are working to um, bring cloud uh, through OpenStack to the enterprise. Um, so that's my background. <coughs> um, and uh, so just a little plug for HP. Um, and so first I want to talk to you about, just in general, let's do some level setting. So what is cloud computing? Did you know cloud computing has been around for a while? We just didn't call it cloud computing. Okay, we called it software as a service and web APIs. We didn't know it was cloud computing because they had their own names back then. And we didn't need another name for them. They were called software as a service and they were called web APIs. They didn't need the name. But, um, and they were doing quite well and, you know, Salesforce has of course been around since the 90s. Um, I'm just curious, like, what was the first software as a service application you used? Uh, here's my first opportunity to see if your arms are still working. All right, what was the first software as a service application? I'll start. So I used something called Hotmail. How many of you used Hotmail? Okay. Many of you might have used it in the 90s. You were using cloud computing back in the 90s. You were early adopters. Okay. Now that was the type of cloud computing that we call software as a service. And companies like um, uh, PayPal, okay, uh, or software as a service for payments, but they also had APIs that allowed you to make payments through uh, computer to computer, okay? And that was also a type of cloud computing. Okay, now, um, around 2006, we saw the emergence of infrastructure as a service and platform as a service. And these are also types of cloud computing. Now, I jokingly refer to these as cloud computing 2.0. It's really not a good term, so I don't recommend you use it, but uh, technically it's accurate. And the reason why it's accurate is because software as a service and web APIs were, were cloud computing. We just didn't use that term. But the term cloud computing really became popular because of platform as a service and, and infrastructure as a service. Uh, it's actually coined, I think, by uh, or used in the in the popular media uh, by Eric Schmidt. Um, he's talking about Google App Engine. Um, <clears throat> and what made platform as a service and infrastructure as a service so interesting is that, and the reason why I like to call them cloud computing 2.0 is in reference to Web 2.0. And if you remember what Web 2.0 is, Web 2.0 is where the owner of the website designs the website for participation. In other words, with a web 1.0 website back in the dot-com days, the person who created the website also created all the content. Okay, so it's your website and you decide what went on it. With web 2.0, um, like YouTube or Flickr, or eventually you know, Facebook and Twitter, <coughs> You would design your website so that other people could contribute content to that website. Okay, and that's what we call Web 2.0, the architect for participation. And so why do I say cloud computing 2.0? And again, I don't recommend you use this term because people don't really like throwing 2.0 on something, but it's technically relevant. It's because with infrastructure as a service and platform as a service, these are cloud computing services that were designed for you to put your code up on top of them. Okay, so you can take your own ideas, write some code, and put that code in the cloud, and now you have an application in the cloud. And that was not possible before. Before, you had to go and take your code and go and set up your own servers and manage those servers, and that was quite expensive and complicated. So cloud computing infrastructure as a service and platform as a service really became popular because you can take, you know, anybody can now put their own idea in the cloud for very little money and become the next successful startup, <coughs> theoretically, okay? Um, now, of course, and then as we go forward, now we have software that lets you set up your own cloud, and that's what we're talking about today, OpenStack. So at this point, you should be thinking, okay, cloud computing's been around for a while. You've seen it proven itself. It should be unstoppable. And it's unstoppable, in my opinion, because of these unstoppable characteristics, 
Okay, so it's it's on demand, so you can get it anytime you want it. You can sign up for an account. It's self-service, so you can change it anytime you want. You don't have to wait for somebody. It's scalable, so it grows as you need it. And it's measurable, so that you know how much you're using and you can predict how much you're going to have to pay, um, and that kind of thing. <clears throat> so, um, so we know that cloud computing is going to be here and it's going to be successful. It's just built to be successful. But how are we using cloud computing today? <clears throat> so are we using cloud computing to develop applications faster? Is that what we're using cloud computing for? Because that's what it seems like we're using cloud computing for. But think about it. Are you using cloud computing to develop applications faster? Or maybe you're using it to get feedback faster. Okay, think about that for a second. And the reason why I ask that is because uh, HP and Intel put on a hackathon. It was for social good. We invited people to get together with nonprofits, nonprofits to share some ideas that they wanted an application to be created for. And then we invited developers and designers to work with those the nonprofits to build solutions, okay? And as I, I actually helped some of them a little bit, you know, get started. And uh, one thing you notice when you're working in a hackathon is that even though they only have two days to build an application, they're actually developing their application on their laptops. So they're not developing in the cloud. Now think about this. We've had all of these years of cloud computing, and we're still developing our applications on our laptops. Is that wrong? I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying that I don't think we are using cloud computing the way we think we're using it. We're developing our applications pretty much the same way we always have. So what is cloud computing doing for us? And I would argue that it's really cloud computing what it's doing is it's helping us get servers when we need them. That's really what cloud computing is doing, is getting us to be able to host our code when we need it. Okay? And what that does is that helps us get feedback faster. Okay? So that means that uh, while they're developing their code on their laptops, but then all of a sudden they decide, oh, I need a new server. They can get their server immediately and deploy it and get feedback from possible customers. The person, the team that won this hackathon actually deployed their application and went out and got nonprofits to use that application that weekend. Okay, so they were actually able to get customers that weekend. That would not be possible without cloud computing. Now, why am I telling you this story? It's because cloud computing is really about deploying applications. And what does that mean, deploying applications? You've got to orchestrate which servers you want. You've got to figure out how you want to deploy them. You've got to configure them once you've deployed them. And then you've got to manage them. And that's more or less a traditional IT role. So yes, developers are important. They're the ones building the applications. But what cloud computing seems to be doing is providing us a better IT service by giving us this much faster. So what it's doing is it's helping you deploy your stack. And we all like stacks, right? Like stacks of pancakes? I like pancakes. Uh, I did a search. I found there's lots of different types of pancakes out there. This one right here is kind of your traditional American style. And then in Europe, they like, they like potato pancakes. Uh, I, I like them with blueberries, personally. So this is kind of like your stack with a little extra on it. And then I, I tried to find out if there are like Chinese pancakes. And, and this is what came up. Have you guys ever heard of Chinese pancakes before? Yeah? I, I honestly didn't know. They look like pretty good. So, so bad. They're not that good? What are they called? Silvan. Silvan? Oh. <laughs> Salvi. Salvi? But 
Hi. I'm terrible at this, so uh, if you want to have a good time, just get me to try to uh, say Chinese words. That's it's really embarrassing. Um, uh, let's see, how do, I, how do I say that, Allison? Is it Ping Gao? Can you say that right? Is it kind of like saying thank you? Ping Gao. Ping Gao. Ping Gao. Okay, I'm trying. I'm going to try. Okay. So anyway, I point this out because there's lots of different stacks out there. Okay, I started off with classic ASP, but I also uh, developed in PHP, and this is a common stack that developers have been developing on. Of course, it's not just PHP, you've got Perl, you've got Python, all right? Um, there's also Java stacks, you know, depending on what you like to work with. You've got um, maybe your Spring framework or uh, Oracle database and different tools. But it starts getting complicated. Like when Ruby came around eventually, Ruby just wasn't, it wasn't just your, you know, um, your Rails framework plus the database, you needed all this other stuff to make it work. You needed, uh, you know, there's different types of web servers, there's different types of databases, there's caching involved, uh, you might have client-side libraries for JavaScript, I mean, there's really a lot more than just a, a language, a database, and a server. And now there's this concept called a full stack. Have you ever heard of full stack? Okay, the concept of a full stack developer is somebody who can not only do the the back end and the database, but also can do some JavaScript and the client and do some, uh, some user interaction to the full thing, right? Somebody can build a startup from scratch. So there's a lot going on. You've got your, um, your you might be a Node.js developer, you might have some different JavaScript frameworks you're using, you might also have a, a mobile application that you're building. <clears throat> and you know, Node is popular because it can serve both uh, client-side Ajax as well as uh, mobile applications with APIs, okay? So there's just a ton of these different stacks out there. And what you've got to do as a developer is you've got to develop, you've got to choose the right stack for the job, okay? So if you're building a web application only, you might choose a certain set of technologies, like you might stick with your LAMP stack, perhaps. Uh, if you're building a mobile app, that's a different stack. If you're doing a combination, that's even a different stack. Or if you're doing a, 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 a tablet or iPad, that might even be a completely different stack. So there's lots of different application stacks out there. And so what does this mean? This means that our deployment options are getting out of control. It's not possible to just simply say, this is how you deploy applications. Okay? So um, getting back to cloud computing, there's really uh, a lot of different options for you, thankfully. Uh, you could start off with the infrastructure as a service and just take your traditional IT application and deploy it. Okay, and all it might use is your compute, some sort of storage, and a network. Okay, really simple. You know, an application from the 90s can run on that. Okay, um, or you might take it a little bit further. You might say. Uh, infrastructure as a service plus some platform services. Maybe you want to use like an object store, or um, maybe a database as a service, or a message queue, okay? And your application is gonna scale a lot easier because of that. <clears throat> um, and if you take this route, you could even build your own paths by combining in some deployment technologies, okay? Um, in the uh, OpenStack world, we've got this project they're working on called Heat. Okay, that's one way in which you can put together some services and bundle them up and deploy some components um, together. And there's other projects working on, what's it called, Solarum or something like that? Solum? Solum, so, so, yeah. So there's, there's some other projects out there. Uh, or you can just go straight to PaaS, Platform as a Service. And there's different types of platforms as a service. There's some that run as a service, and there's some that uh, so you only can get it as a service, like Porsche.com, or then there's some that are software that you can deploy on OpenStack instead of your own platform as a service, like uh, OpenShift or CloudCon. So lots of different options. Um, and so what I'd like to uh, start to leave you with some thoughts are, um, you know, you could, you could use a, cloud, uh, a stack in the cloud, okay? You've got um, these only run in the cloud. You don't have an option to run them anywhere else. Okay, and then there's others. Uh, we've got even a representative here today from Geekin Spaces. They've got a, a product they called Cloudify, and they've got some other technologies that allow you to set up your own pass wherever you want it to run. Okay, 
Uh, so those are some options. And uh, let's see here. Um, and there's a lot of different ways you can do this. You can deploy applications by hand, just by having it run right on your uh, infrastructure as a service. You could also have it use a third-party deployment technology like Puppet or Chef or Rightscale. Or, or you can, again, you can use a platform as a service on top of your cloud. Um, and, and so where we're going with this is we are headed toward a, a, to a, on a journey where eventually our stacks are going to be in the cloud. Like the, the traditional LAMP stack is going to evolve somehow and eventually be cloud native. Uh, but that's a ways off. So what I wanted to ask you is what kind of applications and technologies are you using or is your company using or are your friends using? And what we should do as a group, and I mean that in the, the Hong Kong sense, and I mean that as the OpenStack sense, is find out what do customers want to deploy and how can we make that easier for them? Because I think that's really where the opportunity is. There's a lot of work that needs to be done to get all these applications out there that our customers want to run on top of OpenStack. And they will pay to have us help them do that. So out of curiosity, how many of you are looking to help customers uh, use OpenStack? Okay, a few of you, okay. Um, are any of you currently working with customers on OpenStack or related technologies? Okay, got some folks, okay. Um, how are you getting applications to deploy? What are some different ways that you can get applications to deploy? Okay, this is where the hands start not working again. All right, so uh, what, what's a simple way to deploy something on top of OpenStack? Oh, you wanted to say something. I know you did. Do you want to share? I'm sorry, what's that mean? Manual. Manual, thank you. That is what I was looking for. Of course, there's the, the manual process, right? You can uh, get a server up and running and SSH into it or FTP into it or whatever you need to do to get your application uh, up and running on that cloud. Sure. And by the way, sometimes that is a victory, right? Okay. But that's not, that's probably not what our, our well, okay, let's talk about that for a moment. What kind of applications would customers want and be happy if they could run, even if they had to do it manually? What's that? Okay, good, right? Let's start off with that, right? Anything. A variable workload, okay. 